All right. So in order to achieve that 500,000 to 750,000 mark, if you're in your second, first or second year of operation, or if you are in that 500,000 to $750,000 mark, and you're trying to hit that 750 to uh, up, you know, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, what is it that we have to do? Well, there's a couple of things when we're planning and we're, we are in the planning phase of getting ready for the new year that we have to take into account. Number one, our budget. I get asked this question a lot. What should my budget look like? What, how much do I actually have to invest? Well, he, here's the thing. It really kind of depends on where you are in your business. For now, we're looking at what is your mix? Let's start there. How much are you spending? How much um, time and effort do you need to spend in digital marketing, promo items, or business development efforts, which involve your in-group? Your in-group, for those of you who this is your first time watching, is your influencers network. Okay, these are the people that are going to help build your business, either directly or indirectly. So this is the first part that we have to keep in mind, because at the end, we have certain benchmarks we have to hit. As we talked about yesterday, we want to make sure that our efforts are one hour per account. So if you are uh, working as a marketer, yourself because you're a business owner and you're dedicating 10 to 15 hours, you should be visiting or having communication with 10 to 15 accounts per week. If you are, if, if you have hired a full-time business developer, then your business development efforts need to be 35 to 40 hours a week. It doesn't change it's still the same ratio. This is how you're gonna achieve success. Because your goal, no matter what your mix looks like, needs to be a minimum of 20 to 30 referrals per month. And you should be achieving 65% conversion from referral to, in, you know, from intake to in-home and a conversion of 15% when it comes to digital leads. These numbers vary, and you know, if you're more experienced, your conversion rate is going to be much higher, and your closing rate should be 80 to 95 percent, depending on where you are and how experienced you are in your industry. So, what does this mean? This means that you're going to be budgeting 200 to 2,000 dollars every month to digital efforts, whether this be pay-per-click advertising on Facebook, or if it's um, pay-per-click advertising on like Google or any other one of those platforms that, that are gonna help promote you to search engines, that, that's included in there. Are you using web crawlers and lead generators such as, you know, Karen Homes, Aging Care, care.com, caring.com? You know, there's, there's a plethora of age companies that do this. You, what, how much are you spending? How much are you dedicating to growing your business? Your promo items, what do you, these are investments. Many people look at this as an expense, but they only become an expense when you're buying these promo items and leaving them in a storage closet as if you're a retail store holding onto inventory. The fact is that if you are not giving away your promotional materials, then you're just throwing away money. And please, if, if you just want to send me a free $2,000 a month or you know, two to 3,000 a month, I'll happily take it from you. I'll put it to a much better use for your company than keeping a bunch of stuff stored in a closet. The fact is you want to focus on effective promotional materials, pens, coffee mugs, clipboards, hand sanitizer, branded masks. You know, we're, we're in a pandemic. 
you want things that people will keep, will distribute, that they're not just going to pass it off to their kids. You know, stress balls are great, but they're, they're pretty useless. I see a lot of people trying to give those away. Uh, what, what is it that you're trying to do? Let's look at your promotional mix. It should be 1% of your quarterly revenue or $3,000 per quarter, depending on where you are. Again, this is not an expense. This is an investment. The amount of ROI or the return of investment on a simple item, such as a properly branded clipboard, could be as much as ten to twenty thousand dollars per dollar you're spending. Let's use the clipboard example. I have a clipboard. I have my company logo on the back of this clipboard. I've given this clipboard to the nurses' stations at a skilled nursing facility. I've given this clipboard with pens to the social workers, the billing department. They are using it because a clipboard is a much needed item in these facilities. They're constantly used. A lot of times people are filling out paperwork and they have nowhere to, no, they don't have a table or somewhere uh, readily available. So they rely on these clipboards. So they are sitting there. Your branding is shining in the face of that potential client. Your branding, is, you know, is in the face of the referral source. So they're talking to people and they hand them this list of 30 agencies in your area. Hey, here you go, pick whichever one's the best because while most social workers or referral sources will give between three and five agencies, especially in the private pay industry, it does not mean that all of them will. Some of them, don't want to get involved in the drama of referring out. Some of them don't want to put their reputation on the line by referring an agency that's going to screw things up. So what they'll do is they'll generate this massive list and they'll have in their office a wall of every agency that's ever walked in, including some that have closed down years ago. And what happens? These people are overwhelmed. So the families don't know who you are. Most, most people, when they're in these situations, when they're in the hospital, in the skilled nursing facility, whatever, they don't know what they're supposed to do. This is the first time they've had to deal with this and they are in a grind. So they're just being bombarded with information. But if your materials are in there and you have a proper mix, then what happens? Now they'll sit there and go, oh my goodness, I have, I've seen this company before. They'll tell you, I'm not sure where I saw you, but I know I saw you somewhere. And that's, that's where the magic happens. This is where, this is where it, it, it all takes place. And this is where you, know, you start getting that recognition, that phone call, those, those situations where people are starting to recognize your business and where people are starting to make a distinct effort to contact you. And this is why that 1% or that $3,000, depending on where your stage is. And now, mind you, these are minimum numbers. You know, this is where you start to see the benefit onto and the return on your investments. The next thing you have to keep in mind, now we have our investment of promotional items. We have invested money. This is, again, another investment into digital sources. Now that dollar amount, that 200 to 2000, these again are minimum spends that we recommend, okay? It'll balance out. Today, you need a high volume of, of uh, digital resources because you're newer or because of what's going on and you can't really get in there. Maybe you haven't dedicated the effort you've needed 
to properly building and growing your influencers group, your influencers network group. Okay, that in group is all almighty. This is where all what opens all the doors for you. Maybe because of all of this, you need to be up here, up here with that digital stuff. But as time goes on and your business grows and you get more known and you're understanding better what needs to happen, the amount you spend monthly goes down and the amount, um, and you're able to eventually hire a full-time marketer and your results will come in, okay? So now we've covered our marketing budget, our promotional items budget. So let's, let's get down to the last part, the part that's gonna really skyrocket your business, that influencers network group. These are your social workers, your real estate agents, your elder care attorneys, your doctor's offices, your assisted living facilities, your independent living facilities, your hospitals. There's four ways you're gonna interact with these facilities. I mean, we're gonna talk about direct one-to-one -one contact, but when you're interacting with the facility, the account as a whole, there's four primary ways. Lunch and learners. This is your opportunity to get in, teach them a little something and have them learn and understand who you are, you know, what your services are, what makes you different, and most importantly, how to work with them and how they need to work with you, All right? Lunch and Learns are educational pieces. They are not just promotional pieces where you're coming in and saying, hire me, I am great. I am the bee's knees, I am the most fantastic agency in the world. And my least favorite expression ever, we go above and beyond. I hate that expression, I really do. Any of you who've seen my YouTube videos uh, or have heard me do live trainings anywhere, you will understand why I hate that going above and beyond expression so much. All right, but basically this is your chance to not just say you go above and beyond, but understand how. See, every facility has their own needs. Your agency is unique or should be unique. So it's two parts. You need to learn what their requirements are and how to work with them. But they also need to understand what is your service offering and how is it that they are going to work with you. If you're not doing this mutual exchange of communication and ideas, then nothing will ever happen. This is also your opportunity to create the ever important follow up. See, one of the biggest mistakes when people do lunch and learns, because I hear this all the time, I spent $150 giving these people lunch and I, I didn't, nothing came for me. Well, the reality is you should have some sort of a result from a lunch and learn with, within three to 10 days, okay? Now, whether that proves to be true or not, 100% depends on whether or not you're doing this properly. See, the, the coaching clients that we work with, and when we do our live trainings or our one-on-one -on -one trainings or even our online courses, we teach a very simple thing. How do you communicate your idea and how you're doing this is really going to depend on whether or not you're going to have a positive result from one of these lunch and learns or actually from anything at all you know what is the problem you have to identify that problem then you have to describe what is a solution you know without those two things if you don't have a problem and you don't have a way to fix the problem you're spinning your wheels now once that's done you have to understand where's your value 
explain what makes you the ideal agency, the ideal solution to provide for that to fix their problems. Why shouldn't I? Look, let me tell you something. One thing I've learned doing this, I have done this in four different countries. I have done this over 40 times in the last two years alone. It's taken people from zero to that two to $3 million mark. All right, in, in the last three, four years, okay? Over 40 agencies all over North America and even two agencies out in uh, Northern Europe, okay? And here's the one thing that I have found. It's not different here, okay? It's not, it's not. Every agency has the same set of issues. Every agency has the same, the, the same hangups. Every agency has, has to deal with some of the same elements. We all provide services for a community of people that desperately need our help. We all provide work with the same pool of caregivers. It doesn't make a difference. You know, um, we'll go into this more detail on tomorrow when we talk about recruitment and on uh, Thursday when we go over retention practices. But the fact is there is no caregiver shortage. And I know, I know there's a lot of people that will sit here and they'll bash me, oh, you're, you're full of it. There is a caregiver shortage. Look at the numbers. No, there isn't. The average agency, okay, private pay agency that will have anywhere from 30 to 100 clients will typically have a roster that consists of 2.5 to four caregivers per shift. Now, does that mean there's a shortage? No. Now you're still sitting there and going, yeah, yeah, but Julio, we know, we know, we have this massive list, but they don't want to work. No, no, they do want to work. You don't, again, you don't have a caregiver shortage problem. You don't have a recruitment issue. You have a poor staff training issue. You have a lack of appreciation issue for your caregivers. You have poor retention policies in place. You have poor career development or personal development issues. You have a lot of other retention issues. No recruitment issues. Recruitment's the easiest problem in the world to fix. If you write the ad copy properly, they will flock to you. Just bump up your price. If everyone else is paying 11, pay 11.50 an hour, they'll, they'll come running to you because other agencies have the same retention issues that you do. And as a direct result, they will not uh, be able to keep their caregivers and those caregivers will leave them for a nickel an hour. And that's a fact. You know, so back to the business development part, the lunch and learn. What do we have? We are dealing with all the same issues. Um, these caregivers, these agencies, they all do the same thing, no matter where they are in the world. You have the same pool of caregivers, whether you are doing private pay or you are doing Medicaid or whether you are doing some sort of government funded program to pay for this, some veterans program, some charity, it doesn't make a difference. You're still all fighting for the same pool of aid. You are still all fighting because everybody wants to compete here. You know, here's, here's the high end, here's the low end, everybody's trying to compete here. So what makes you different? If I was a referral partner, ask yourself this question. Why would I hire you? Does that even make sense? Okay. If you cannot answer why I would hire you beyond using fluff language, such as we go above and beyond, we are the best, we are the most experienced, we have 24 seven coverage, that's standard. That's industry lingo at this point, verbalize it. If you can't do that, and then most important part, the part that everybody screws up is you have to announce your call to action. Once I went and spent 150, 200, $300, whatever it is on a lunch and learn to feed all the right people, everybody, decision maker, I have them in the room. I have talked about what sets me apart. I have identified their problems. I have identified their clients' problems, our mutual people that we're all going after. 
Once we have done this, what is our next step? What are we going to do next? We have told them what the problem, we have told them how to fix the problem. We have explained to them unequivocally how we provide the best, best value to do it. Now what? What most agencies do is they walk out of the room. They say, thank you very much for your time. Our brochures are in the back and they leave. Did you make an effort to set up a meeting with anyone? either before the lunch and learn or after. Did you make an effort to explain to them? Did you make it clear how to get a hold of you? What your requirements are to take a client? Did you ask probing questions? Did anyone ask questions? Did you prompt them to ask questions? People like structure. People like to understand clearly what the expectations are. It's no different from your staff than it is with anyone else that you run into. And this, we suggest about $150 per. Events, events are great. Social workers conventions, wellness fairs, all of this stuff, you know, um, networking events, industry specific, all of this, you have to budget for that. We suggest you budget about three to five a year, okay? The budget should be whatever it is that you need in order, in order to satisfy and whatever you can afford because we also have sponsorships. Other people will do events and it just gets your name out there. Okay, we, we suggest you do about one per quarter, okay? And then your memberships. Look, if you're if you're a home care agency and you're not part of your state's home care association, then you, you're really you're really missing out. Especially if you're in a state that does not have stringent uh, licensing requirements. If you're in an area that you can just pretty much hang your shingle out, and so can anyone else. That having a membership to your state's home care association will set you apart. If you're not an accredited agency at this point or haven't or you haven't begun the process, these memberships will help. Also accreditation will help. But all of this stuff needs to needs to do. And you should be spending about five percent, five to ten percent of of your quarterly revenue or annual revenue, depending on how you're doing this should be dedicated to your in-group stuff. That's all your memberships, licensing, you know, your events, everything. However many lunch and learns. Lunch and learns, I put it at $150. That's not $150 per month or per week. This is $150 per account. So if you are actively servicing, um, you know, 10 accounts on your own, then you should be planning to do one lunch and learn for each of them uh, at the very least as an introduction or at some point early on. And then there's schedules that we, when we go over our coaching and training programs, we actually go into a lot of detail about how often and what your budget should look like for lunch and learns. Moving on. As we, get into once we have our budgets filled out we need to understand these are activities that we're going to work on in order to build the relationship with the individuals in our influencers network face-to-face -face contacts you know um the more people you know you should have some sort of face-to-face -face contact now because of the pandemic it does not necessarily mean that you are actually going to stand in front of them Many facilities will not even let you in the door to do this, but you can schedule virtual coffees. You know, there's actually, it's a very simple set technique to do this. Uh, you do a reach out and you can actually do the virtual lunch and learns also. You should be emailing people. You should be hosting networking events or attending networking events if you don't want to host them yourself. You know, um, 
CEUs, CEUs are fantastic just because there is a pandemic does not mean that the licensing requirements for nurses and social workers have relaxed. They still have to maintain their licensing, social workers, administrators, and there are still people out there like uh, our company, we provide an, um, an eight hour Alzheimer's disease and dementia care seminar that's worth, uh, if I'm not mistaken, seven, seven CEU credits for social workers and nurses. Um, and we also have something fun that we can do. You can actually set up virtual bingo. This is, goes over great. And there's a lot of software out there that will allow you to do this at little to no cost. All right, and it's fun, it's engaging, it gets people together. Look, right now, this is the time of the pandemic. We are, um, let's see, it's almost January. We've been in this pandemic for what, eight, nine months now, almost 10 months. People are desperate for human contact. Any opportunity you give people to speak, to communicate, to laugh, to joke, to share ideas, to interact and remember that they are people will be welcome, okay? Something as simple as an ice cream social with proper social distancing. You know, you don't necessarily have to gather all the seniors in the dining area. You can have your people bring the ice cream to them, set up a virtual ice cream social. You can set up a virtual pizza party, a virtual bingo game. All of these events that you're doing, and if you have your caregivers or your own staff with the proper personal protective equipment and social distancing guidelines in effect, you can provide a worthwhile experience. Okay. You need to schedule this stuff. All right, if you're not on a system, and you don't have some system in place, you're, you're just, you're, you're not gonna be organized and you're not gonna achieve the success that you want. This is one of the biggest issues. When I, come, when I come on board and I start working with new clients that I run into, I ask them, what's your schedule look like? What system do you have in place to market your business? To what, what system do you have in place for your business development efforts? They don't. Look, your, your facilities need to be broken down into three categories, tier one, tier two, tier three. It doesn't matter where they fit in. It has to do with the potential and amount. You know, when you're qualifying these facilities, you're gonna categorize them. Tier one facilities that are giving you one to two referrals a week, you're gonna visit them one to two times a week. These are, the, these are your bread and butter. You don't, you don't wanna ignore them. Your tier two facilities, maybe they don't give you quite as many referrals, but they're still viable for those occasional clients, a couple of clients a quarter. You want to visit them once or twice a month. And your tier three, those are the ones that have potential, but maybe they're not quite there yet. They're good for a couple of clients a year. Visit them once a quarter. I mean, one to two times a quarter, depending. You should always be making visits. People change, facilities change, staff changes. You know, the business model within some of these facilities change all the time. There's been many times throughout my career, I've been doing this for about 20 years off and on now, all right? The facilities, I've seen many times in independent living, actually, I've seen the transition a lot, independent living going into assisted living, assisted living is becoming CCRCs. You know, these different categories of facilities, they swap around depending on who the administrator is, if they get bought out. Uh, I've seen people come in, large hospital and medical management groups come in and all of a sudden they start their own home care agency. In fact, I've even been hired at one point by a chain of assisted living to help them get their systems in place. It happens. The, the, the landscape changes all the time. You don't wanna ignore anyone. All right, so th this is stuff that you wanna keep in mind and what's your schedule look like? You know, you should, we, we recommend looking at your, you know, looking at your designated area, okay? Kind of look at it in the sense of the old vacuum cleaner salesman or, or the paper salesman. 
all right, where you have a sales territory. Break it down, break down five sales territories in your geographic area. So this way you're not wasting time. You don't wanna go way over here, you know, to the Northern part of your state and to the Southwestern part of your state, you know, all on the same day. It just doesn't make sense. You don't wanna go so far out to where your caregivers can't even get to, okay? So these are the things you kind of want to break down. You want to understand this. You want to understand where your facilities are located, where they are in relation to each other. Most people live within 10 miles of a hospital. Most people. Your ideal clients definitely do. And because people understand this, a lot of your skilled nursing facilities are within two miles of that hospital. Okay, your, your acutes and subacutes, your rehab centers, your short-term inpatient rehab, uh, you know, skilled nursing facilities. And close to them, we have, we will typically find your assisted living. It's all within that, you know, two to 10 mile range, okay? Because these services, they kind of lump together. So how are you planning to visit these places? How are you planning to make contact with these places? Have a system in place. And this is what you need to keep in mind if you want to hit your revenue goals. Get your budgets as a wrap up, get your budgets in place. Understand how much you're spending on what activity and actually spend it. With a side note of your promotional items, these are not vanity pieces, okay? You are not Walmart, you're not trying to keep inventory. You want to get rid of them. You want to make sure that your stuff is being purchased properly and distributed in a way that's most effective for you. Understand your numbers. All right, what is it that you are trying to achieve? Are you hitting your benchmarks? If you're not hitting your benchmarks, if you're not tracking this stuff, you're never going to hit your revenue goals. Understand what schedule you need to be on. Where are your facilities? Why should you be visiting them? What is your end goal? And what are you doing for your referral partners? How are you growing your influencers network? You know, all of this stuff, all of this. It all goes into play. And if you've developed your plan for the year, then please put it into effect. If you need coaching, feel free to reach out to us. We're here. We have, we actually are currently running a special on a two hour strategy session to help you come up with a viable business development plan for the year 2021 a viable retention plan for 2021, a viable recruitment plan. Now, where do you want to take your business? Where are you now and where are you trying to get to? Are you trying to get to that next level or are you just starting out? You have to understand and your plan has to be custom for each. Visit us at thebrionisgroup.com and schedule, schedule your strategy sessions today. Thanks you all for watching. Thank you all for being here. We, um, we, we look forward to hearing back from you. And if you haven't signed up already, there's an actual link somewhere in the Facebook Live if you're watching this. And if you're watching the replay of this on YouTube, there, you know, again, don't forget to subscribe. And there will be link. Okay, uh, Miss, Miss T, uh, what is a CAU? A CEU is a continuing education unit. Okay, so social workers and nurses, RNs, um, social workers, they have to get so many continuing education credits in order to maintain their licensing. So a lot of agencies, you know, a lot, not just home care, but durable medical equipment, you know, different, different types of services, they will sponsor people or bring people in 
to provide these credits for the social workers, nurses, administrators, doctors, things like that. They'll partner up with elder care attorneys. It's kind of like the people will work together to give the classes necessary in order to give the credits. Okay, no problem. All right, so, you know, uh, again, if you're watching this live, thank you all, you know, really appreciate the support. And um, if anything, if you haven't registered, there is a link in the description box on here. Tomorrow we will be covering recruitment and then we will be covering retention on December 31st, which is Thursday. And if you're watching the replay of this on YouTube, all the information is down below. All right, thank you everyone. We will see, see you again soon.